Today I'd like to kick off my video preps project, and this is going to be the master playlist for all these related videos in regard to vehicle preps. So and this is all based off the amount of time that I spend in a vehicle, whether that be uh, commuting in the downtown Seattle area, uh, going to work, uh, running errands with the family, and then also going on road trips. I spend a lot of time in a vehicle. We happen to have two vehicles. We have our family vehicle, which I'm in now, and then I also have the commuter vehicle. And I want to have a set of uh, preps uh, included in those vehicles for every everyday occurrences as well as any kind of uh, roadside assistance, things like that. So I br briefly covered this topic back in 2011, but it wasn't as refined as I would like. So uh, I've been refining it and I'm ready to start documenting it here on uh, YouTube now. Uh, I've been, it's been in the works for uh, a couple years. So, and the cool thing about this particular project is all the gear that's included in here is more likely to be used than the stuff that I include in some of my other projects, like my uh, urban bug out bag. I haven't had to use the bug out bag in a true emergency, uh, but when you're talking about vehicle preps uh, you're going to be using that stuff often so i'm looking forward to documenting it here on youtube so when you're talking about what you would need in a vehicle, there's a few different types of events to take into account. Uh, there's everyday type events. You're going to be using things like electronics, uh, items for entertainment, like with the stereo system, and maybe hygiene items. Uh, then when you bump it up a little bit to maybe more minor incidents, uh, maybe having a first aid kit in your vehicle, uh, having a minor repair kit with headlights. If you have a headlight, a tail light out, you don't want to get a ticket by the cops, or just having a little a small set of tools in your vehicle. And then uh, more major incidents which I would uh, probably refer to as roadside assistance type events uh, not counting stuff that you could just call AAA on uh, we're talking about things for illumination signaling uh, if you're to change a flat tire and you want to be able to make sure that uh, cars are able to see you easily whether it be at daytime or nighttime uh, so flat tire repair items uh, emergency escape for example if there's a, hopefully that never happens but having to escape from the vehicle and uh, fires is another common one with vehicles and then you also have the topic regarding seasonal prep items uh, such as uh, winter preps then so there's a whole uh, subset of preps that you to include in your vehicle that's probably not as applicable in the summertime uh, but very applicable to be used in the winter time like what we are at the time of the recording of this particular video Let's talk in a little bit more detail on how this vehicle preps project is going to be laid out. So I basically have a plan to have tiers of individual items and modules for my vehicle and I want to be able to have it replicated to both vehicles. So it's going to be kind of similar to my EDC which uses tiers. So I have a tier one, tier two, tier three, and then it's also going to be similar to my bug out bag which uses modules and a module is just a storage container uh, that has a one particular type of item like food or tools uh, that's going to be considered a module but not all items that are in your car need to be in a module for example you don't need to have a fire extinguisher module you just have the fire extinguisher so that's going to be the strategy that I'm going to be implementing in this particular project and it's going to be prioritized based off of the distance uh, from the driver's seat so right now I'm in the driver's seat uh, and it's going to be prioritized based off of this particular location so uh, as, as uh, with my EDC I have just my core EDC that I always have with me uh, and for this particular project I'm going to treat the glove box as my EDC for my vehicle. Uh, I just think it's the most convenient uh, storage method that's in all vehicles. We all have a glove box and when for example if I get a, take, get a rental car if I'm traveling or whatever I'm going to take all the items out of my glove box and put it into that uh, rental car glove box. So I think it's the uh, most important uh, section of the car to store stuff and that's actually going to be in included in what I consider tier one. So tier one is the first row of the vehicle in my particular project. So the driver's seat and the passenger seat over here, which also includes that glove box. Now on the sides, on the doors, you oftentimes have uh, various storage locations in there. You don't have that much uh, a room in there, you know, maybe the thickness of around that to be able to store whatever you need. And that's going to be the modules and items uh, for tier one are going to be stored there. I'm not going to include any kind of a center console because all vehicles are uh, different. So tier two is going to be the back row. If you happen to have one, uh, for most vehicles, I think you would, if we're not talking trucks and things like that so tier two will be the back row that's where a uh, kid prepper baby prepper are on those doors they also have storage sections in there uh, they're able to store things sometimes they're a little bit larger in addition to the back of the driver's side and passenger side seats you also have some kind of webbing usually uh, to be able to store additional items so those everything that's included in that particular row is going to be considered tier two and then tier three is anything that's in the back so if you have a trunk or just a back like we have over here a hatchback anything like that those are going to 
be my tier three items. And that's how I have it all prioritized. So the most important items that I'm going to be, think that I'm going to be used, uh, used the most often are going to be in tier one, uh, less important ones that aren't going to be as used as often in tier two. And then we're talking a lot of the roadside assistance type stuff, emergency type things in the back. And that's how this particular project is going to be structured in regard to tiers and modules. Now let's talk over the type of gear that will be included in this particular project. So I'm going to be going, as always, with quality gear, but I still want it to be affordable uh, because I want to be able to easily replicate it to multiple vehicles. I have two vehicles. I don't want to have an expensive, uh, massive project that I can only do in one vehicle and not the other one. So the gear uh, that I find, uh, usually I want to go with highly rated ones, uh, but I still want it to be affordable so it's able to be replicated. So uh, also the gear is going to be practical items. There's not going to be zombie weapons or anything like that in here. I haven't had to run into any zombies in any of my commutes uh, during my lifetime. So the items that I'm going to be including are going to be stuff that I have had to use, whether that be entertainment items, uh, uh, vehicle repair type stuff, headlamps, things like that, practical items. And also I want it to be uh, discreet to deter from theft. So I'm not going to have a bunch of fancy uh, uh, tactical storage methods that look really cool but are just going to be uh, an invitation to be uh, stolen uh, in the middle of, of the night. So I'm going to be going for discrete storage. Uh, we might be talking about using things like kids lunch boxes and stuff like that for storage of the modules. Uh, but we'll go into that in a little bit more detail. And then it's going to be more tailored for commuter vehicles, not as much for trucks. Uh, trucks is a whole other uh, topic I think for regarding what kind of gear that you're able to store in there. You have the truck bed, you have all, all the uh, capabilities. This is going to be more for uh, people like me that are the urban type commuters, uh, people in sedans, uh, their SUVs, uh, cars like that. So more cars than trucks. Now let's talk over the video schedule. So this is going to be done in parallel with my other video projects that I have going here on YouTube, whether that be the bug out bag project, uh, doing the various product reviews, things like that. I'm going to do it in parallel with that, just kind of mix and match. So uh, every time you tune in, there will be a different type of video and you're going to bound to be seeing some of these uh, vehicle preps type videos coming out. So it's all going to be organized in a playlist. So this is the first video of that playlist. So if you happen to be on this video, you're at the right place. I'll make sure I include a link to that playlist in the description box below. And it's going to be ordered in sequential order based off of the tier. So we're going to, in the playlist, it's going to start off with this first uh, video. And then we're going to be start talking about uh, EDC type items, uh, tier one items, tier two items, tier three items. However, the individual videos may be done at random uh, based off of, you know, where I'm at in the particular project. I, for example, I might uh, hit the uh, winter type preps uh, that will go in the tier three a little sooner than uh, maybe some of the tier two items just because it's winter season right right now. However, they will be organized in the playlist sequentially. So even though they might have come out randomly like that, they'll all be ordered sequentially based off of those tiers. That's going to do it for this video featuring the overview of my vehicle preps project. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I hope everything makes sense with regard uh, to the strategy. Again, it's going to be tiers of individual items and modules. It's all going to be organized in this playlist and they're going to be organized in sequential order, even though they may come out in random order. So I've listed a few categories that I plan on including in this particular project, uh, whether that be uh, the first aid type items, tools items, uh, but leave a comment below in the comment section regarding what categories you think should be included a part of every vehicle whether that be a signaling roadside assistance. Uh, I'm very interested in seeing in, in reading what you guys have to say with regard to what you keep in your uh, vehicles uh, for not only emergency situations, but also day-to-day -day type activities, uh, commuting and uh, family road trips. So leave your comments below in the comment section and let's kick off this new video series featuring the Vehicle Preps Project. See you guys next time.